Hey folks, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on The Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news and interviews. Also, I'm to the best MJ community. Today is Tuesday, it's June 25th, hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at some news with regards to Organogram and their investment in Sanity Group out of Germany. And we're gonna take a look at the OGI chart. We'll do some technical analysis. I'll give my thoughts and opinions on the price action in the days, weeks, months ahead. But as always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only, and you should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say or write. Also, full transparency, I do own Organogram in my long-term MJ portfolio. Before we get to it, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. And you can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. I'm going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And just in case we ever get censored here on YouTube, that's a way for you to maintain constant communication, and we also post on Rumble as well. Organogram invests in Sanity Group, a leading German MJ company. So this is the second Jupiter investment strengthening Organogram's European access, including to the high growth market of Germany. And these were the highlights. Concurrent to the investment, Organogram and Sanity Group have entered into a new supply agreement to include significantly higher volumes and the intention to work together on the uh, commercialization of Organogram's brands and IP in Germany. Invest in the form of unsecured convertible note combined with a minority stake in equity stake in Insanity Group as well. Organogram entitled to appoint a representative to Sanity Group's board of directors. So there were some highlights here. They're pleased to announce the investment. I'll go through quicker here in the European MJ market using proceeds from its Jupiter strategic investment pool. The company has agreed to invest 21 million Canadian and that will be for purchase equity interests from existing Sanity Group founders and shareholders providing the company with a minority stake in Berlin, Berlin-based MJ company Sanity Group. Company may advance another 4.5 million Canadian as a second tranche of the unsecured convertible note for future opportunities to be pursued by Sanity subject to satisfaction of certain conditions. Sanity has quickly established themselves as Germans uh, in the uh, as a leader in the German market where it maintains a robust distribution network over 2000 pharmacies and approximately 5000 physicians in Germany. Sanity currently holds approximately 10% share of the German medical MJ market. Additionally, Sanity is currently participating in the Swiss Recreational MJ Pilot Program with one store operational and plans to expand its retail footprint in Switzerland. In the coming months, Sanity is expected to invest in proprietary distribution channels, providing it with what is believed to be a competitive advantage and com also capitalizes on new medical consumers entering the market. So they go through some, of, uh, some commentary there on EU GMP certification in Moncton. A meaningful presence in Germany and Europe are essential to achieving our ambitions to a global MJ leader. We believe that after Canada, Germany will emerge as one of the most promising markets under a nationally legal model, said Paul, Paula De Luca, Chief Strategy Officer at Organogram. And they talk about the rest of Europe. And then they go through the just kind of some estimations here. Germany is expected to bring in USD 1.5 billion in total sales in 2024, set to grow to 3.7 billion by 2027. There's, this remarkable growth is driven by a 30 to 50% increase in medical MJ prescriptions since April 1st, 2024. And we know they'll look into fast track pillar two. So this is going to be really good. In my opinion, another kind of reassurance, form of reassurance or vote of confidence that we're more than likely going to see pillar two happen. The second phase of adult use legalization is going to be for profit at that point, right? So commercial sales, and that's going to be uh, huge for these producers, right? And other names, retailers, you think of a high tide, they, they're looking to uh, tackle the European market as well. So we'll go through a little bit quicker here. They talk about a ripple effect. That's what I've been saying for a while now, right? It's just the domino starting to fall. Once one or two, right? Canada, now Germany, major countries, right? Now we're going to see the rest follow suit. In my opinion, we talked about news yesterday with regards to the UN saying that they're looking to, their top officials are saying we need to basically scrap the war on drugs. It was failed. And we need to do other alternatives. So what do you, you can read between the lines there, right? So it's looking good. They talk about strategic rationale and potential opportunities. I won't go through the whole thing just in effort of time. Most people can go and read it on their own time. They talk about the investment details as well. So I encourage you to check that out if you feel free to do so on your own time, if that interests you. We'll take a look at, real quickly here at the daily time frame on OGI. 
it was a daily bear flag. I just posted a video as well. This one here on CGC, I did some analysis and it's a daily bear flag. We had a daily bear flag on MSOS and daily oversold. So if that's all on CGC and MSOS, then we're coming off daily oversold here as well, but we get very close on OGI. I'm thinking the downside on OGI might be a little bit more limited and I'll explain why a little bit more on the monthly time frame here in just a moment because we are looking to change the monthly trend and we've already formed a higher low and some are questioning whether or not we could confirm an uptrend over the next couple of months, which I do think could be the most likely scenario. We do have another inverse head and shoulders here as well, potentially forming on OGI, which we had something similar on MSOS. You can see here, this was the right shoulder forming, uh, sorry, the head and then the potential right shoulder forming. We'd have to kind of move it out a little bit more. I was just drawing that preemptively. Uh, it was definitely, I think about a week ago. And then we could be gearing up for an EMA 12 and 26 bull cross there on MSOS as well. So that is showing that we could potentially see the same thing play out on OGI and then a neck come back up test resistance here at the neckline, which would bring us up to around $1.70 and then come down for a potential right shoulder and then see that bull cross. But yeah, I, I'm thinking that the downside on OGI might be limited compared to a name like CDC where we could easily see another 10, per, 10 20% of downside with that daily bear flag target. I brought it up in the video, but I'll bring it up here real quickly. You can see here it's targeting about 535. But I think OGI might be limited to about 5 to 10% of downside, worst case scenario. But we are looking at this inverse head and shoulders that's forming as the as a potential bullish reversal, but it's early. We're just on the head here now, uh, and we have yet to confirm it. So overall, I think OGI may be seeing its downside limited compared to other peers in the space. And as you can see here on the monthly time frame, we did break the lower high, lower low pattern. So we're no longer in a monthly downtrend, and we're looking to confirm a higher low and a higher high to be in a monthly uptrend. And this would be in the history of the chart, the first EMA 12 and 26 bull cross on the monthly time frame, we got very close to it here, but it didn't see its its follow through. So that would be the first time on the NASDAQ, potentially here over the next few months as we lead into the election. And I think it's there's talks about uh, Ramaswamy becoming the vice president if Trump were elected, and I'm not gonna get political. I just want what's best for MJ. I'm not even in America, I'm Canadian, so it <laughs> doesn't matter, I can't vote anyway. But at the end of the day, I just want what's best for MJ and you know, that would be good if, because he has been pro federal legalization of MJ. So if that were the case and he becomes vice president, then that could bode well for MJ into the elections. And then, like I said, Florida on the ballot, I think that's going to get approved. We're going to see other states, you know, Ohio coming online, Pennsylvania. It's just, and then other states that haven't, you know, we're starting to see incremental reform there, whether it be medical or recreational, full blown adult use. That's where we're heading, right? Over. We're at half of the U.S. essentially, right? Adult use legalized at the adult use level, right? So we're at about three quarters of the U.S. under some form of, you know, medical, right? So some form of reform. OGI looking for its monthly higher low to confirm the monthly, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, the higher low and the higher high to confirm that uptrend. We need 291 resistance to break from here and we need to hold support at 102. So there was a lot of downside once we started monthly consolidation. We could have easily pulled back about 47%, 48% just look for a monthly higher low. So we're set up well here. Like I said, I would expect over the next, over the coming months leading into July 22nd and the comment period being over, I think into July, August, we're going to start to come back up and test resistance there at 291 and look to confirm that monthly uptrend and the first ever monthly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross on the NASDAQ. On the weekly time frame, it wasn't looking good as well. Again, I've been saying for a while now, I mentioned it in my CGC video today and explained it a little bit more, but we usually see the, stac the stochastic here on the weekly cross bearish first, then we lose the 10 week moving average, then we see the MACD bear cross follow through and then quite a bit of downside because that is on the weekly time frame, and it means we're, you know, we're very bearish essentially at that point and we could expect it to continue for multiple weeks. On the weekly time frame, we also lost the 50 weekly, which MSOS did as well. So that increases the odds that names that, had, that hadn't done so already were likely going to follow suit. So we did lose that support, which is a little concerning. And then on the daily time frame, we're below all of our daily moving averages. And we have yet to see the death cross with the 50 and the 200 day crossing, which could happen over the next week or so, in my opinion, which would mean we could easily see that, that downside continue. And if we just take a look at this move off of the low as well, if you take your fib tool and go from the high to the low we do have the 0.786 there at 139 so like i said it's looking like 
downside could be limited here for OGI, but don't be surprised if we do dip down around that 130, 120 level. All right, going to end it there. Let me know what you think of this news as well in the comment section below. We'll continue the conversation there. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you again in the next video.